Let us remember to have a sincere intention seeking reward from Allah Ta'ala. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Last lesson, those of you who uh, attended, and I think most of you did, we were talking about the proof from the Quran that the only religion that Allah Ta'ala accepts is Islam. We gave the proof from the Quran that the only true religion is Islam. We mentioned two verses and we said, of course, there are more, but we mentioned two verses last, uh, two weeks ago, actually, in our previous lesson. So who remembers one of these two verses? I, I had sent them to, the, to our WhatsApp chat group. I sent them after the lesson. So one of you will tell me and another one will tell me the second verse that was mentioned. Uh, Muhammad, dear, you have your hand up. Go ahead. And Mia, you tell me the second one then. Muhammad, go ahead. Saying, Inna dina in the Allah al Islam. Yes, Barakallahu bika. Inna dina in the Allah al Islam. The verse means the only true religion is Islam. The only religion accepted by Allah is Islam. Who remembers the second verse? I sent it. Mia, dear, do you want to say it? So this also, this verse, dear, also gives us the meaning that Allah Ta'ala is ordering the believers to die as Muslims, so that the person then preserves his faith. Make sure to have the belief of Islam until the person dies. Barakallahu biki. Inshallah ta'ala, we will continue. Now, last time, so we gave the proof from the Quran. Now, we will mention a mental proof, a proof that the sound mind accepts. As Muslims, we worship Allah and we believe that Allah is the creator. He is not created, he is the creator. So Muslims worship Allah, who is the creator, who is not like his creation. He is not like the creation. He does not have a body, shape, or form, or size, or color. No, he is the creator, and he's not like the creation. This is what we as Muslims believe. Whereas non-Muslims, they uh, many of them, they worship something that is created. Whether they worship a human being, whether they worship a cow, whether they worship fire, they are worshiping something that is created. It does not deserve to be worshiped. Something that is created cannot create. It cannot create. So for sure, it is not a creator. If it cannot create, it is not a creator. So it is not the Lord. It is in need. It cannot create. Whereas Muslims worship Allah, the creator, who is not created, who is not like his creation at all. We mentioned also last time that Allah Ta'ala sent prophets and we sent Allah sent prophets to guide people, to guide them to what benefits them in their hereafter. The prophets were sent to show people the path to paradise. Who's going to tell me who is the first prophet? Adam. Adam, alayhi salam, Prophet Adam, alayhi salam, he is the first prophet and he is the first human as well. So the first human that Allah Ta'ala created is Adam, alayhi salam. Adam was created without a mother and without a father. So Adam, alayhi salam, was the first human and the first of all the prophets. And we said that all the prophets have the same religion, which is Islam. All of them came with the religion of Islam. All of them said, no one is God except Allah. This is 
the belief of all the prophets. Then we said after Prophet Adam alayhi salam, many other prophets came. And the last of them all, and the best of them all, is Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Now today we will mention the name of three other prophets who came after Prophet Adam. I encourage you again to take notes and inshallah ta'ala, I will also send you afterwards the lesson. So I will mention then three more prophets who came after Prophet Adam alayhi salam. So after Adam alayhi salam, the next prophet is his son, Sheath. Sheath is Prophet Adam's son. So he was, he received prophethood after Prophet Adam. His name is Sheath, and he was the son of Prophet Adam. After Sheath came Prophet Idris. So the third prophet then is Prophet Idris alayhi salam. So the first is Adam, then Sheath, then Idris. Then the fourth prophet is Prophet Nuh. Alayhi salam. The fourth one is Prophet Nuh. Alayhi salam. It's just now, one second. What did you uh, say? I didn't, I didn't have internet connection. And I missed what you said. I only heard that uh, the Prophet Adam sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the first prophet. Other than that, I didn't hear anything else. Yes, dear. I will repeat them. So we said the first prophet is Prophet Adam alayhi salam. After him, came Sheath, who was the son of Prophet Adam. So the first one is Prophet Adam alayhi salam, then Prophet Sheath alayhi salam, who was the son of Prophet Adam. Then came Prophet Idris. The third one is Prophet Idris alayhi salam. And the fourth one is Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Prophet Nuh was the fourth prophet. And he was, he was not the first, no, he was the fourth. But he was the first prophet to be sent to non-Muslims, to non-believers. He was the first prophet to be sent to non-believers. This is because before Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, at the time of Prophet Adam, and at the time of Prophet Sheath alayhi salam, and at the time of Prophet Idris alayhi salam, the people were Muslims. All of the people who were alive at that time, they had the correct belief. They were Muslims, all of them. So when did blasphemy kufr occur? Blasphemy kufr occurred after the third prophet, after Prophet Idris alayhi salam. So Prophet Nuh then was the first one to be sent to non-Muslims. He was the fourth prophet, but the first one to be sent to non-Muslims because before him, all the prophets were sent at the time where all the people were Muslims, had the correct belief. Is this clear to everybody? Yes, it's clear. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, so this matter is very, very important. So in case you read anywhere or somebody tells you that Prophet Nuh was the first prophet, no, this is not correct. The first prophet was Adam alayhi salam. Prophet Nuh was the fourth one, but he was the first one to be sent to non-Muslims because at the time of the prophets before him, the people were Muslims. Yes, there was a sin committed, but it was not kufr. It was not blasphemy. Welcome, dear Maisa. Okay, then we mentioned the first four prophets in order. And we said that the last and the best of them all is Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Muslims love all the prophets. We respect them all. All of them said no one is God except Allah. We also mentioned last time that the accountable person has to be Muslim. 
let's review quickly. Who is the accountable person? We mentioned that there are three things that need to be there for us to say that this person is accountable. Karim, go ahead, dear, tell us. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Uh, pubescent. Pubescent. Okay, so the person is pubescent. They need to be sane. Sane, very good. Sane meaning not crazy. Sane, yeah. yes. And heard the call of Islam. Barakallahu bika. And heard the call of Islam. So these are the three conditions that need to be there for us to say that this person is accountable. This person is pubescent saying and heard the call of Islam. If a person is not pubescent, is this person accountable? Mia, dear. If... No, he's not. No, he, you know, he's not. You are right. No, because we said among the conditions is for this person to be pubescent. So then let's give an example of a person who is not pubescent. A five-year-old child a five-year-old child is not pubescent, three-year-old, two-year-old. So this little child who is not pubescent, okay? If this little child who is not pubescent, if he was born in a family and this family was not Muslim, they did not have the correct belief. They were kuffar, non-believers. If this child of theirs dies, and this child, when, it, when he or she died, was not pubescent, this child will go to paradise, even though his parents or her parents were not Muslims. But this, but this child will go to paradise, will not go to hellfire. Why? Because this child died when he or she was not pubescent. So they were not accountable they will not be punished in the hereafter, even if their parents were not Muslims. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay, good. Then I will give you a second example. As our dear Karim told us, the person has to be sane. So then a person who is insane, who is crazy, is insane, does not comprehend, was born like that. Let's give the example of a person who was born like that. And he died like this. Maybe he died at the age of 55. But all his life, he was insane. Crazy. Had a, a mental issue that rendered him insane. He was not sane. Was this person accountable? Who can tell us? Was this person accountable? No, 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 this person was not accountable. So this person, even if he died at the age of 55, he will not be punished in the hereafter. He will go to paradise because he was not accountable. He was not accountable. He was insane all his life. Okay, we gave the example when this person was insane all of his life. Now we give the third example. The third example is if a person never heard the call of Islam, never heard no one is God except Allah, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, in a language that this person understands. This is important, okay? Because, my dear, if a person is Chinese, for example, and he heard it, he heard the two testifications of faith from the Adhan in Arabic, and he does not understand Arabic. He did not receive the, the call of Islam because he does not understand Arabic. However, if he does understand Arabic, then yes, he has received the call of Islam. So let's give an example of a person who lives somewhere, uh, somewhere in Africa in the jungles. Are there people nowadays who live in such places? You would be surprised but it seems there are. You know, those of you who watch uh, National Geographic or any of these, you probably hear that sometimes they show you documentaries of some people, of tribes 
who live in places where they have never heard of, uh, of uh, mobile phones or, or computers or internet or TV. They don't know any of that. They are still living uh, life like uh, they're absolutely not developed where they are. So yes, there are probably people nowadays who have never heard the call of Islam. Even if these people worshipped stones, of course, they, they are non-believers, but they never heard the call of Islam. So if they never heard the call of Islam, are they accountable? Are they accountable? Uh, no. No, they're not accountable. So even if they died at age 40, 25, 63, they are, and they never heard the call of Islam, they were not accountable. So even if they worshiped stones, I don't know what they were worship these people, but they will not be punished in the hereafter if they were not accountable, okay? So then we gave examples of these three, and that is important to know. However, if the person was accountable and was not Muslim, it is an obligation. It's a fault. It's an obligation upon this person to embrace the religion of Islam, to become a Muslim. And this is really what is of benefit to this person. This is good for him. If he becomes a Muslim, this is something that is good for him. Because by becoming a Muslim, this is how he or she will be in paradise forever. So if this person then is accountable and not Muslim, it's an obligation upon this person to become a Muslim. We don't tell them, choose, do you want to be a Muslim or not? No, 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 no. We don't listen to some people who nowadays on social media say that they say they believe in all the religions or they say they respect all the religions. No, we believe in Islam and we love Islam. Islam is the religion that Allah accepts. Islam is the religion that the sound mind accepts. And the person has to be Muslim. So then this person who is not a Muslim and is accountable has to immediately become a Muslim. How? By saying the two testifications of faith. So if you have a friend at school and you tell them about Islam and they say, mashallah, this is so beautiful. They might not say mashallah, but if they tell you this is so beautiful, teach me how do I become a Muslim? You tell them to say, no one is God except Allah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. This is how the person becomes a Muslim by saying the two testifications of faith. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. They don't have to say it in Arabic. If they don't know how to speak Arabic, they don't have to say it in Arabic. They can say the meaning of it in English. So they can say no one is God except Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So this is how the person becomes a Muslim. Who is then the believer? Who is the Muslim? Who is the believer? The believer is the one, when I say believer, it means Muslim. And when I say Muslim, it means a believer. Because anyone who is not a Muslim is not a believer. In Arabic, we say mu'min. So mu'min means Muslim. Muslim means mu'min. Who is the believer? The believer is the one who has the proper belief in Allah. He has the proper belief in Allah and of course the messenger of Allah. He has the proper belief in all the prophets. He believes correctly in Allah Ta'ala. He believes as Muslims believe that Allah is not like his creation at all. He believes that Allah is the creator of everything. And Allah, who is the creator of all the creation, 
He is not like the creation at all. The creator is not like the creation. So all what we see around us is created. Let's look around us, wherever you are, wherever you are seated right now. Look around you. You are seeing different shapes, different forms, different sizes, different colors. Maybe there are people around you. All of these are created. Who created them? Allah. All what you are seeing around you, Allah is not like that. We're seeing bodies. Allah created bodies. He's not a body. We are seeing different forms and shapes. God created these and he does not have a form. He does not have a shape. We are seeing a light. Maybe some of you, <laughs> the electricity is going off and off, but there are times when we are seeing light. Light is created. Darkness is created. God created them. He is not light. God is not light. So we're seeing colors. God created them and God does not have a color. So Allah is not like the creation at all. We do not say, how is he? No, we say that Allah is not like the creation at all. We do not imagine him. He is not like any of the created things. So the believer believes this. The Muslim believes this. Yes, dear. The believer believes what we just said. So then, if a person believed that God has a face, does this person have the correct belief? No, no. If a person believed that God has hands, does this person have the correct belief? Also, no. I'll get to you, dear. I'll, inshallah, I'll answer your questions after, in a moment. So... No, this person would not have the correct belief if he believes that God has a face or a head or a body or hands. No, he does not have the proper belief. So if he does not have the proper belief, he is not a believer. If he's not a believer, he's not a Muslim. So this is something very important to keep in mind. We said then the believer has the proper belief in Allah. He believes that Allah is the creator of everything. He created the skies. He created earth. He created all the places, all the places, all the directions. And Allah existed before creating all the places, whether the skies or the earth. God created them and he existed before he created them. So this means God exists without a place. He does not need a place. God does not need any of his creation. He does not need a place. My dear, what is in a place has a volume. It's taking a volume. Volumes are created. God created volumes and he does not have a volume. So the person who has the proper belief in Allah believes that Allah exists without a place. He has no beginning and no end. By this, we have now spoken about three attributes of Allah. We spoke about existence. We spoke about eternity, that Allah has no beginning to his existence. And we said that Allah has no end to his existence. We say that Allah is attributed with everlastingness. Let's see at the end who can repeat these three attributes of Allah that we mentioned today. <laughs> so, yes, dear. So we mentioned three, I will repeat them. Existence, that Allah Ta'ala exists without a place. We mentioned that Allah is attributed with eternity, meaning that Allah has no beginning to his existence. And we said the third attribute that we mentioned today is everlastingness. That is, that Allah Ta'ala has no end to his existence. Yes, as you correctly wrote, Allah is attributed with more than these three attributes, but today I mentioned these three now, okay? 
So inshallah, in a while, I will ask who will remind us of these three. I have another question for you. I also sent a lesson about the angels. Who remembers something about that lesson? About what was mentioned about the angels in that lesson? Yes, dear Yusuf, share with us, please. That the angels do not eat or drink. Very good, Tarek very good. Angels do not eat and do not drink. You are right. They do not eat and they do not drink. Who can tell us something else that was mentioned in that lesson? They do not sleep. You are right, Muhammad. They do not sleep. Yes, Noah, tell us more. They do not disobey Allah. They do not disobey Allah. Very good. Yes, you are right. They always obey Allah. You are right. So the angels, all of them are Muslims. All of them are pious believers. They never disobey Allah. You are right. Who's going to tell us where do they reside, the angels? Where is their place? Where is their residence, the angels? Who can tell us? No, go ahead, please. In the skies. In the skies, yes, you're right. The angels are the residents of the skies. They have tasks that they do. Inshallah, in other lessons, we will talk about that. So they have tasks that they do, and they are the residents of the sky. There are angels that come down to earth sometimes. Yes. And they have different things that they do. Yes, dear. Go ahead. You want to tell us something else about the angels? Go ahead. Um, and see the angels are not females or males. Very good, excellent. Yes, they are not males and not females. You are right. So then they do not reproduce. They do not have children. The angels do not have children. They are not males and they're not females. They're not men and they're not women. So they do not have children. They do not reproduce, but you know that their number is a lot, a lot, a lot more than humans, a lot more, mashallah. And inshallah, in some lessons, we will talk about their size. So this is now what we mentioned about the angels. Who knows what they are created from? Yes, Yusuf, dear share. From light. They are created from light. You are right. They are created from light. And they are the residents of the skies. Now, one more thing I want to share with you for today. In the matters of the religion, we say that the judgments are into seven categories. The judgments are into seven categories. When I start mentioning you will understand what I mean by that. Today, inshallah, I will mention one of these seven. The first one is what is an obligation? The obligation. Or in Arabic, we say al-wajib or al-fard. So the obligatory. Okay, this is one of the seven judgments, something that is obligatory, wajib or fard. For example, the person who is accountable is obligated to pray five prayers during the day and night. There are five obligatory prayers. When we say obligatory, it means they are fard. So this is a judgment. This is one of the seven judgments. The obligatory okay now the obligatory judgment it's into two types one type is a personal one and one type is a communal one i will repeat them one type is a personal one and one type is a communal one i will mention the name in arabic and next lesson, inshallah, we will give the definition of that with an example. In Arabic, the personal one is called Fard Ayn. Fard Ayn. 
the communal one is called in Arabic Fard Kifaya. Okay, so these two kinds fall under the judgment of obligatory. Under the judgment of obligatory, there's the kind that is a personal and the kind that is communal. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. Now, before we say the halil together, who will remind us of the three attributes of Allah that we mentioned today? There are more. And inshallah, we will talk about them in our next lessons, inshallah. But today, I want us to review the three that were mentioned again. Karim, dear, you can tell us one. Sure. Uh, everlastingness, meaning that uh, he will, or Allah will not die or vanish. Yes, very good. The existence of Allah has no end. Allah does not die. You are right. 